Welcome to July's LECO Challenge. Today's problem is Task Scheduler. You're given a character array representing tasks CPU need to do. It contains capital letters A to Z, where each letter represents a different task. Tasks can be done without the original order, and each task takes one unit of time. For each unit of time, the CPU could either do one task or stay idle. However, there is an integer n that represents the cooldown period between two of the same tasks. We want to return the least number of unit of time that the CPU will take to finish all the given tasks. Say that we're given a list like AAABBB with a cooldown period of 2. We know that the uh, minimum amount of time taken to finish all these tasks is going to be 8 because we'll do task A, B, uh, then we'll have to have a cooldown period of 1, and then we'll go AB again, cooldown period of 1, finally finish with AB, which equals 8. So this is a difficult problem, very difficult problem. Uh, and I'm going to go to the whiteboard to get our intuition down. So let's just say we had a list that had three A's, two B's, and a C. Just intuitively, um, how would we want to do this? And let's say we had a cooldown period of four. Now, we know that we want to do as many different tasks as possible to maximum or minimize the amount of cooldown period that we could do. So here uh, we want to say do A, B, and then C. And since we've finished all the tasks that are available, all the different tasks, uh, now we have to do a cooldown period, right? And that's going to be cooldown period of two. Uh, now we want to do whatever's left. There's only going to be A and B left. And now that's going to be a cooldown period of three. And finally, we have A left, and that's just going to be A. So this in total would equal 11. So we already can get some intuition down of how we want to uh, approach our problem. We want to figure out how many times the letter or the task appears in our list. So we can create a user counter object to do that. Uh, we also want to make sure that we want to perform the task that appears the most first, and then um, whatever appears the next most after that, and so on and so forth. Um, that way, we want to extend the uh, cooldown, like the amount of tasks that we can do, and have the one that appears the most um, go first. Okay, so knowing that, um, we can think of some data structures that we th that we can use to do that. How about a heap? How about if we had a heap that's going to have some tuple with the number of times it appears? So A appears three times, B appears twice, and C appears once. So we already know that we want to uh, do as many different tasks as possible uh, while the cooldown period is, is less than um, four, right? So say that we had a temporary array of some sort. And what we'll do is pop off each time, subtracting the number of times it appears onto our temp list. And each one of these is going to count as one unit of time, right? So um, you can see that here, uh, we can do three tasks but uh, because of the cooldown period, we're going to have to wait two more times uh, before we could perform any more tasks, right? So here, like, the condition is basically some sort of iterator that has to say, hey, it's going to have to equal i is less than or equal to the n. And each time we do this, we're going to be adding the amount to some sort of counter, uh, some sort of our, our, our output variable. I'll call it like time or something like that. Now when we're finished with this and we've finished with our cooldown period, what we'll do is add it back to our heap. But um, the thing is, we don't want to add ones that we've already uh, completed, like 0 of c here. Uh, there's no more left, so we're not going to add that one. 
Uh, we'll still count the time because we had to bring it in, but only A and B is going to return here. And now we can just go through this um, loop again and again, counting up the number of times until we are either out of the heap, either heap is like none, heap is gone, or the or this temp array is gone. Yeah, so that's the basic intuition. Um, let's start coding this out to make it make it make more sense. All right, so the first thing we want to do is initialize a couple of variables. We want to have our uh, output, which is going to be equal to zero, as well as a heap, and we'll just call that h. So this will be zero, and this will be a list. Now we want to create our counter object, right? And for that, I think I'm just going to use the Python's counter object. We'll just say counter and put in the tasks. And we also need to um, uh, make this to a, a tuple list with the number of times it appears to be on top and the, um, the value itself, the character, to be the second element. So for key value in the counter items, what will we do? Let's um, well, let's add it like a heap. We'll do the heap queue, heap push method, add it to our heap, and we'll make a tuple of the number of times it appears as well as its uh, character. And technically, we don't even need this character, um, but I'm just going to keep it in there in case I need to uh, do some logging. And recall that <clears throat> Python is a min heap, so we want to make this a max heap. So we'll have to make that a negative amount right up here. All right, so cool. Now we have our heap. So while there's a heap, what do we do? Uh, well, first, we need some sort of temporary list and our iterator. So i, and we'll have, just call it temp. We'll make this equal to 0 and temp equal to just a list. And this we don't actually need to make into a heap uh, because we could do a heap push later. So while um, we want to finish our cooldown period, right? So while i is less than or equal to n, what do we want to do? Well, let's first pop off the um, the number of times something appeared and as well as the character. Uh, I guess we'll just call that key. And we can pop this off of our queue. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I just realized before we do that, we have to make sure that a heap even exists. And we should increment our output by one. So if a heap exists, because this would fail if there's no heap, right? Um, uh, we'll pop it off. Uh, what we'll do is subtract or add, actually, because remember, we're going opposite order. Uh, we're going to add one to our nums. And then we're going to add this back into our temporary, temporary array. So we'll add this to our temporary array as a tuple we'll of nums and the key. So now it's like decremented. But one thing to remember, if this amount is zero, we don't want to append it, right? So if the nums is um, less than zero, then we'll append it. Otherwise, we don't want to append it to this temporary, temporary array. Now, um, once we finished that, this is where uh, we want to increment our i. But Keep in mind, because of that last um, amount where we finish our our heap, say that we finished here with AB, we don't want to wait another idle idle uh, because we've finished our, our heap and task, right? So um, to make sure that we can break out of our loop, we'll have to say if not heap and not temp, then just break out our loop because now we're finished. We have no more tasks to complete. So finally, uh, we go through that, and we're going to add back what's in our temp. So we'll say, I guess, key value in temp. We'll add it back to our heap. So we'll add back to our heap, just the key and value in our temp. So that's going to allow us to continue this on until we're finished. Finally, we just return our output because we've incremented it all the number of times we have a task or the number of times we have to wait for our cooldown to finish. 
So let me make sure I made no typos. Uh, okay, that's not right. <laughs> um, let's see here. I equals nen, not temp. Nums is greater than zero. Okay, so I think, um, I mean, mistake there. If nums is less than zero, right? So this should be eight. Yep, looks like it's eight. And let's go and submit that. And there we go, accepted. So this is a hard problem. This is not an easy problem. Um, but basically, if you get this intuition down that we want to do the task that appears the most first, and we want to make sure that we do uh, as many different tasks as possible to minimize the amount of cooldown period, then this algorithm becomes a little bit easier. Um, it took me a while to uh, finally get this down, uh, but this was the solution I, I liked the best. Uh, my original solution was a lot dirtier than this, but I think this is pretty readable and understandable. Uh, there are some other tricky solutions that you can use, like involving math, uh, but uh, I think this is more understandable for what we're trying to do. So thanks for watching my channel. Hope that helped. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.